So I'll start the class once again. Um, welcome to BC110. Thank you, guys. Okay. I'm audible now. Okay. Welcome to BC110 on the course on identity. Class, are you able to hear me? It's it's working. It's good. Yeah. Am I clear? The video is good. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you for confirming. Yeah, all fine. Okay, so we are on section 10. Okay, on topic we're going to discuss today. We're going to study on born to overcome always. So let's turn 1 John chapter 5, verse 1 and 4. Talks about whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten of him. Verse 4 says, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world through our faith. So John is actually talking about being born of God. So in this very book, in 1 John, we see that in chapter 2, 3, and 4, John has been again and again emphasizing on being born of God. So how are we being born of God? Anyone from the class? Anyone from online? How are we being born of God? Women? Okay, Vimal says, when we believe in Jesus Christ, we are born of God. We have Sean here. Uh, when we put uh, put our old self to death and, you know, be born of the new self in God. So when we put our old self, the whole self, that is, when we trust on Jesus, we have been born of God. Yes, John has been telling the same thing here. Yeah. Whoever believes in Jesus Christ, whoever believes that is complete trust as sean said complete trust that jesus is the son of god is been born of god so this means believing in the messiah one who was promised from the very old testament you see time and again the prophets were saying that there is a need of messiah god will send the messiah to redeem his people and here we see John been emphasizing Jesus as the Messiah. So usually if you see the book of John, the Gospel of John and the other books, John emphasizes on the love of God. John emphasizes on the love of God. But he never wants anyone to believe that the salvation comes only by loving others. But here he says it is a free gift. One who has been born of God, one who believes on Jesus is the Son of God, have been born of God. So when we put our complete trust on Jesus, on the work that he did on the cross, the work that he accomplished on the cross, that he died for you and me, he shed his blood for you and me. When we believe Jesus is the Lord and Savior, and we accept truth. You see, one has been born of God. And the verse also says, everyone who loves him, who begot also loves him, who is begotten in him. So what do we understand from here? John says, 
been born of God as all these effects. So there are two major effects. What are those? It is assumed that we will love God, Him who begot us. We love God because we have been born again into this new family of God. It is also thought that we love others as how God loves us. We need to love each other. That is who? The brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to love them. And this is a common ground where, uh, you know, um, when we talk about the love of Christ, so we need, it has been discussed on the common ground that one who believes in Jesus, we have the free gift of salvation. How do we receive this free gift of salvation? By grace of God. So we don't toil for it. We don't work for it. So here John is mentioning about loving others. So when we love others, what do we do? Are we loving others outside a caste, creed, language and the tribe? Are we loving others beside our denomination? Or are we holding on to a denomination and say, God, Jesus died on the cross only for us, only for this denomination? Is it so? Does the scripture talk about any denomination? Does it say that Jesus died only on the cross for this set of people? This is what Paul was emphasizing, that Jesus died on the cross for the whole world. What does John 3.16 say? God so loved the world. Did Jesus? Did God say he loved only certain denomination? No, God is a big God. You know, he's, he's talking about the whole world. So he says, I love the world. I love the world. And I died for each one of them from the world. So people may be in the faith or people may be outside faith. Okay, of a different faith. But if they believe Jesus as the Lord and Savior and accept Him as the Son of God, will they receive the salvation, which is a free gift? Isn't it? When, when people from different denomination or people from different faith, when they put their faith on Jesus, when they come to the uh, knowledge of Christ, receive Jesus as a Lord and Savior, they get into the family of God. So there is no denomination in picture. There is no caste in this picture. There is no language. You may be in any tribe, any language. But the minute you trust Jesus, you accept him, you believe in him, that he is the son of God. He died on the cross for you and me. He died for me and receive him as a Lord and Savior. You have been born into God's family. You got it? This is what John is talking about. You may be in any caste, any tribe, any denomination, but the minute you accept Jesus, you come to the knowledge of Christ, and you accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Now you have been born in God's family. So here is emphasizing on the free gift of salvation. You don't work for it. You don't toil for it. You don't earn it. But it's a free gift. How? Once you believe Jesus as the Lord and Savior, you receive it. You receive this eternal life. And you've been born again in God's family. So being born of God... As a common ground, that is by having putting our faith in Jesus Christ. So, verse 4 says, Whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world through faith. Through our faith. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, Paul says, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So the victory, the battle has been fought by Jesus Christ. And we have the victory through Jesus. As we studied in the of God, and our victory is in Christ Jesus. Our 
topic is in Christ Jesus. So as we have studied that, let's move on to the next promise of life. Can I request from John chapter 5, verse 20? 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we know that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true why being in his uh, son jesus christ he is the true god and eternal life to know him and to be in him is eternal life okay so what we see here is the very verse starts saying like this, that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his son, Jesus Christ. The very conclusion of this letter, John is returning to a very, uh, to a major theme that is fellowship with Jesus Christ, relationship with Jesus Christ. So how do we get this relationship? How do we develop a relationship with God? How do we develop the relationship with Jesus? Yes, yeah, Sean. When you meditate on his word. I meditate on his word. Okay. Anyone? Through prayer and singing time to God. Okay. Anyone? Line, you can type in the chat. Uh, okay. Nina says. No, no, faith in him. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Please go ahead. Uh, put your answers in the chat. I'll read it out. Unmute and share. How do we develop this fellowship with Jesus Christ? By obeying in his word. There also might be like certain moments in life we have to decide whether if it's uh, God or if it's uh, or whatever work you want to do. Suppose, for example, you have to attend church on Sunday, but you have some other function you have to attend on Sunday. But that's when you have to decide whether you, if God is important or people is important. When you make those type of those, uh, priorities. those decisions, when you set those priorities is when you deepen in a relationship with God. Yeah. Thanks, Sean. So what we see here is setting up priority. Okay, so how do we set our priority? How do we develop this fellowship with God? The relationship with God is nothing but knowing Him. Once we get the knowledge of knowing, this is what John is saying about. This is what John says in 520, in knowing God, that we may know Him who is true. The minute you know who God is, you develop a relationship, you develop a fellowship with him. So in knowing him, and the word uh, John uses here, know, in Greek means, it says gnosko. It means knowledge or experience. The very experience that you have when you pray, when you relate yourself with God, through that experience, you get to know God, the knowledge of God. And the very experience that you get when you spend time with God in prayer, in His Word, you develop a relationship with Him, you develop a fellowship with Him. And this is how that you get to know Jesus. And there's an understanding. There is an understanding that we receive how the work that Jesus does in us reveals i mean you know gives us an understanding of who he is in us it gives us the ability to understand who god is in our life so the understanding comes when we have this relationship with god when we have a develop a relationship or develop a you know a fellowship with god we get this knowledge when we receive the knowledge of who Christ is in us, we also get an understanding how a human interacts with two people and we try to understand each other. In the same way, in our fellowship with God, in our relationship with God, we try to understand Him. 
God gives us that ability to understand Him so that we may know Him better. The word also says that we know Him because He has revealed Himself to us. It's not that with our ability, with our thought, we are able to understand God. It is a gift of God. It is God who reveals Himself to us that we may understand Him. That's what the scripture in John chapter 6, verse 44, he says, For no man can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. So unless the Father draws us, calls us near to Christ, we cannot know Christ. So it is God who reveals Christ to each of us when we seek Him. That's what the scripture says. When you seek Him, you will find. When you seek earnestly, you will find Him. So when we find Him, He gives us the ability to understand God. He expands our knowledge to know Him much deeper. The time when you encountered God, Till now, you see how much you know Him. Your relationship with God, your knowledge of God is much better now, more than the time you encountered Him. And you're not satisfied. We are not satisfied where we are because knowing God, understanding God is something that work in progress. Every day when we spend time in word and in prayer, you see, God reveals Himself much more deeper to each of us according to the ability that God is revealing in us. He expands us to know Him. He's working in us. He's revealing Himself to us every day of knowing who God is in our life. So this is the true God and this is the eternal life which John talks about who Jesus is. So John tells here, Jesus, when he was on this earth, yes, he was 100% man and he was also 100% God. Because this is the true God. This He is the eternal life. And we will study more in detail about how Jesus was 100% God and 100% man in, in the course Christology. Yes, John. Uh, yes, John. Uh, when you say that more our spiritual you see that's how close our relationship with God is. Like the the more our spiritual is, the more like uh, we we more light in spirit. The more we we are able to discern much better. The more our spiritual senses are heightened. So does that mean that's how close our relationship uh, with God has become? Okay. You should believe and you should know that you are is the near. There is no time that we could say, I have reached the fullest of knowing God. It is always work in progress. God will only grow, grow and grow. Every time you read the word, every time you see a different revelation or a deeper revelation, I must say, you get in the word. So your relationship with God will grow only much better and better and better day by day. The more you get in His Word, get into His Spirit. You see the Holy Spirit speak and reveal things to you from the Word. And that's how when you pray, when you meditate on His Word, you know, God is a God who reveals the mysteries of the Word to each of us. And again, according to the that each of us have got the relationship that we develop he speaks to us and reveal things to us okay yes by constantly praying and our relationship that's how he reveals himself to us for example if a bottle of water is given to all of us and we are asked to drink how much would all of us drink to the same level or each of us will drink how much the person needs, right? Some may not be thirsty, so they'll just keep the bottle there. OK, I can drink later. Some would actually drink. The one who's thirsty may actually finish his water, isn't it? The same way, God, the presence of God is always there. One gets more of him according to the thirst that each one of us has. You got it? 
everyone you're able to understand right so it all depends on the thirst that we have the more you thirst the more you receive that's what in matthew chapter 5 the beatitudes it says blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of god so it's always good it's always you got a poor in spirit means thirsting for more of his spirit thirsting for more of god thirsting for more of the understanding the revelation of his word what happens more you thirst more you will be blessed by god the more you thirst more things you will be revealed so this should be our prayer lord i need more of you i need more of you i i don't want to be satisfied i don't want to be in the place of content in knowing god you got it contentment is important in the other things in the worldly things okay but when it comes to god we should not be content we should ask god god i need you more i want to know you more i want to understand you more i want to uh, develop this relationship this fellowship more with you expand my spirit person that i may understand more of you and experience more of you so we should be in that place okay with that we will move on to the next one sealed with the spirit sealed with the spirit ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 can i request one of them from the online class to read ephesians chapter 1 verse and 14 vijay if they read we can all hear right yeah shiv kumar prince neena prabhu anyone okay please go ahead you can unmute and read who is a deposit who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are god's possession to the praise of his glory can i read 13 and 14 ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 and you also were included in christ when you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation having believed you were marked in him with a seat the promised holy spirit who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are god's possession to the praise of his glory thank you So in Ephesians chapter one verse thirteen says, "In him you also trusted. In him you also trusted." Is there an action involved from our side? We need to trust. There's an action. Trust. After you heard the word of truth, so in hearing you believed, and you believed, you put it in your action. You. trusted god the gospel of our salvation of your salvation and whom also having believed you were sealed with the holy spirit of promise what happens here this is what the promise that god is given when jesus was ascending to heaven jesus said when i go back i will send you a comforter is he going to visit us or will he abide with us forever That's what John. Which chapter is that? John fourteen. Is it John fourteen sixteen or sixteen fourteen? Can you all turn? John chapter fourteen verse sixteen says, "Can you all read it loud?" NKJV version, please. Yeah, read loud. Yes. I will pray to the Father, and He'll give you another Helper, that He may abide with you for ever. So, who is the Helper that Jesus is talking about? Holy Spirit. Jesus is promising, when I go, I will send you a Helper, a Comforter, who will abide with you for ever. So when we believe Jesus as a Lord and Savior, this is what this verse says, Ephesians one 
verse 13 when you believe when you hear the word of truth when the and you hear about the gospel of salvation and you trust on it and you have been believed when you believe on the gospel that jesus is the messiah is a son of god who died on the cross for you and me and we have been saved through christ jesus when you receive this truth and the gospel of truth is shared when you believe it and you receive jesus as your lord and savior the minute you believe the scripture says you have received the holy spirit within you it's just not you have just not received it but there is a seal there's a seal of spirit you have been sealed with the holy spirit of promise so we have been sealed with the holy spirit of promise so it is something very essential in god's work the sealing work of the holy spirit so what happens how do we know that the, we have been sealed how do we know that we have the holy spirit within us how do we know is it by the expression like you felt chill you felt fire you felt um, you know you felt rain water oil yes those are the expressions of the holy spirit but how do you know the holy spirit is within you the minute you believed jesus as the lord and savior okay okay anyone uh, when you are able to understand the secret truths of the word when you read the Bible, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the Spirit of the Lord who is in you, it gives you an assurance. It gives you an assurance that you are the child of God. You are the child of God. Those expressions are okay, good, but then there's something called inner sense, inner witness within you now you belong to god's family that assurance can only come through holy spirit he gives us that assurance that you are the child of god there is you are the child of god and you know uh, the, with that assurance you also see in this verse you see that it is which is a guaranteed of our inheritance holy spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance so the seal in the spirit is nothing but the presence of god around us when we seek him he is there when we seek jesus the presence of the holy spirit is there how do we how do we get that assurance in our inner witness it is the sense you have that sense within you if someone walks up to you if someone walks up to you and they tell you anand you are not that you are not you don't belong to your family uh, what is your family name yes stephen okay you don't belong to the stephen's family okay you don't belong here can you accept that person's word or do you believe what your dad, mom, your whole family tells? You have the proof. You go through your childhood from the time you were born, from the hospital. They have the photos. They show you all the records. You have a birth certificate. You have everything. Now, you've gone through everything. But there's one person who comes and walks up to you and says, Anand, you don't belong to this family. Will you believe that? You say, no. What you're saying is not right. I belong here. There's an assurance within you. That's how, when you're born of God, when you receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior, you have been born of God. There's an inner sense. The Holy Spirit who's in you will give you that assurance. Will give you that assurance. This is what the scripture says. You have been born of God. Like how the records we have. Same way, this is the word from God himself. He, he says it like you... God loved you so much that God died for you. You believe in that. How do you believe in this word? The Lord who is in you. What is it? Before this, we read the scripture, isn't it? Unless and until the Father calls you, you cannot come to Him. Unless and until He reveals Himself to you, you cannot. 
so god gives you that understanding gives each of us the understanding of knowing him and having been born of god overcomes the world no matter what the world says you know because you are born of god you have this inner witness inner strength within you knowing and assurance that you are of god that's why the scripture says there is no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus there is no condemnation no matter yes as a man we fall we fall but then the lord says when you repent when you seek me don't give up seek me you will come back there is no condemnation in christ jesus we come back we are again his child we are again the daughter and son in him can we turn to 1 corinthians chapter 1 verse 30 One Corinthians chapter one verse thirty talks about, but of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God. So the wisdom that each of us have in understanding God, in understanding our relationship with God, in understanding that we have been born in God's family, is nothing but through God's wisdom. This wisdom comes from God. It's not the wisdom that the world gives us, but this wisdom comes from God. How do we get this wisdom? This wisdom we get when we are in Christ Jesus. When we are in Christ Jesus, when we believe in Him. You see, you have been blessed. You have been sealed with the Holy Spirit, and now we have this wisdom with us. When we have wisdom, this through this wisdom we get the revelation of this of God's word. Through this wisdom, we we come to the knowledge of knowing who we are in Christ Jesus. So, what happens through this wisdom? We see that in the same verse, you see, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness. And sanctification and redemption. Now you may feel that hey, I am not righteous, but then the scripture says, because you are in Christ, you have been made righteous. Now because you are in Christ, you have been sanctified, purified, set apart for His work. Now because you are in Christ, you have been redeemed, redeemed from that old nature, from that slavery. You have been redeemed forever. And you've been set apart. We also see that in Colossians chapter two, verse three, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So when we are in Christ, we have access to God's wisdom and God's knowledge. So God reveals Himself. That's what initially we said, right? When we are born in God, when we are born in Christ, according to our ability, the more and more we read the Word, the more and more we pray, God reveals Himself. So how does He reveal? Through His wisdom, through His knowledge. So true wisdom isn't about getting smart. It's about get God's wisdom is received through in person of. Jesus through the relationship that we have in Jesus Christ through the Word of God. The more and more we meditate on the Word, Word is God. We know that John chapter one it says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God." This Word, when we meditate on this Word, as said in Joshua chapter one verse eight, he says, "When you meditate on the Word day and night." You will have success. You will have victory. You will not fail. You will not go astray. You will always be under the will of God, under the grace of God. Why? The word that is there—it's not in the book. It's not in the Bible. The the word has no power when it is only in the Bible. The word carries power when the word is in your heart and when you meditate on it. You got it? When you meditate on it, the word has power to work within you. That's what the scripture says. You have the power to call things into existence as though they exist. So, how do we call things into existence through the Word of God? For us, so how do we get this Word of God by the wisdom and the knowledge that God has blessed us? So, everything that we get, there's nothing that we can boast of. 
There's nothing that we could take credit of. Everything comes from God. You know, it's a free gift, isn't it? When you pray, when you meditate, God reveals Himself. He pour out His grace upon you. He pour out His Spirit upon you. And more and more you will grow in Christ, in His knowledge, in His wisdom. You will increase in wisdom of God. Huh? The more and more we study the Word, we store the Word in our heart and in our mind. Yeah. So the true wisdom is in Jesus Christ. So 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 14. But their mind, their minds, okay. Here we see Paul is talking to the Corinthians church about the Corinthians. He said, Their minds were blinded, for until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament, because the veil is taken away in Christ. So the Old Testament people believed in the law of Moses and the work that he did, the uh, systematic rituals that they were following. But in Christ, in the New Testament, we see in Christ, our eyes are now been opened, open to the spiritual truth that God has set for us. So the veil has been removed when we are in Christ and we understand the complete purpose of Christ. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 14. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Jesus Christ. So we simply walk in faith and love that is in Jesus Christ. So lastly, I'll just cover five more minutes. We'll see. We talk about Galatians chapter 3, the blessings of Abraham. Galatians chapter 3, verse 16, 17, and 29. I'll just read it. Now to Abraham is seed, where the promises made, he does not say, and to the seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed who is in Christ. And this I say, that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So we see that Apostle Paul is emphasizing on Abraham. Why is Apostle Paul emphasizing on Abraham? You see the history in the Church of Galatians. There were two set of people. Who are the two set of people? They were Jews, Jewish Christians, and they were Gentile Christians. Now, the Jewish Christians are emphasizing on the law of Moses. They're saying uh, you will get salvation only when you are circumcised. Now, the Galatians, um, uh, I mean, yeah, the Galatians, the Gentiles are saying, you know, we believe in Jesus. So Paul is bringing a point here. Paul is saying, God promised Abraham that in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. So here, Paul is making a point here. Observe that the word that is used here, seed, is a singular word. So it's not a plural, it's a singular. So the point is very clear that God is referring to one specific descendant of Abraham. Not all the descendants. One specific descendant who came through the descendants of Abraham was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So he's referring to that. And he says, for the inheritance is of the law. It is no longer a promise. So God, in when we read Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, 2, and 3, God gave a promise to Abraham. It was a promise. It was not something that we need to keep. It was not a law that we need to observe and we need to keep it. But it was a promise. Promise is something given freely. It is the grace of God. So it is the Abrahamic covenant. So what is it? We say that if the inheritance offered to Abraham was was not on the basis of law, but it was on the basis of promise, which is a grace. So we see that God gave it to Abraham. 
in the scripture when it's it uses a greek word called give means um kiras kicharistai sorry if i'm pronouncing it uh, incorrectly in greek it says kicharistai which is based on the greek word which is derived from this word charis means grace so god's giving to abraham was this three was it it was a free giving of grace so the word is also a perfect tense showing that the gift is permanent the gift is permanent to the generation so some of the scholars say that um you know uh, because of these two set of people uh, in the church of galatians they were uh, a jew uh, um jewish christians who were uh, who were focusing or uh, trying uh, trying to uh, tell the gentiles to observe the law so paul is making a point here that if you are in christ then you are abraham see this very clear verse 29 when you see he says if you are in christ then you are abraham seed it is not a seed but you are heirs as well according to the promise that god gave to abraham so all christians all christians who believe that jesus is messiah we are the descendants of abraham and the heirs of god okay when we believe jesus is the messiah jesus is christ automatically we get into this blessing of abrahamic covenant where we become his descendant and heirs of god so this place is a very high privilege place according to the promise that has been given to us so if we are in christ then we have the access to this promise so this the access to this promise does not come to us by any law or does not come to us by being in any set of denomination okay or any set you may be a slave or you may be free you may be a jew or you may be a gentile despite where you are which language which tribe which caste you are the minute you believe jesus is the lord and savior you have been born of god in his kingdom and because you have been born in god's kingdom you have the access of abrahamic covenant abrahamic blessing where you become the heirs of god so the blessing that has been stated in genesis 12 um, 1 2 3 we see that we are blessed in all things and in all area of a life second there are five blessings okay second we see that we are blessed to be a blessing to the nations third we see we have been made righteous by faith in christ jesus fourth we see we have a friendship with god we have this relationship to become a friend with god like how abraham was a friend with god and the fifth see we have the victory over our enemies enemies have no power because god jesus fought the battle he died on the cross and we are in the place of victory so whenever we handle any kind of challenges any kind of situation we should have the knowledge that we are in christ and we are fighting from the place of victory you got it the battle belongs to god lord I mean jesus fights our battle and we have victory in him so with that i end this session okay so in christ we have all good things all good things in christ we have the access of all good things and when we have this access of all good things and we also have this knowledge like christ has been so good that he has blessed us one thing in abrahamic blessing is blessed to be a blessing to the nation what is it when we have this access to the good things the access is also for us to be a overflowing to be a blessing because god has blessed us we are going to be a blessing where we will have this heart of blessing to the other people around us just like how it talks in scripture philemon 16 philemon was a rich man god blessed him because god blessed him he became a blessing towards all the christians who were very poor around him 
so there is a nature of god is for us to be a blessing okay so as we are in christ we should also emphasize on the nature of christ for us to be a blessing to others as well okay so with this knowledge let's pray heavenly father we thank you we praise you we love you we honor you father we come into this presence and we thank you lord that you will bless each of us with this knowledge of father with the knowledge of christ that when we are born when we accept jesus as a lord and savior we have been born of god and when we have been born of god we have the strength to overcome the world because we have greater who is jesus in us than who is in the world lord we thank you for the knowledge for the revelation of who jesus is in us oh father with that revelation lord i pray that each of us will develop an intimate relationship with you and let this relationship birth the wisdom knowledge and the revelation of who jesus is in each of us thank you lord thank you father for expanding this knowledge for expanding this um, knowing of each of us in you oh father so that we can identify ourselves in christ jesus amen thank you lord for doing it so holy spirit i pray that you will strengthen each of us because it is you are the one who will reveal us will reveal more of jesus to us thank you lord in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you class thank you so much god bless thank you for joining in today's session god bless you i hope it was a time of blessing